everyone. Patrick Clark, Colin Porter, Peter White. I have breast sweat. <laughs> it's so hot in Madison right now. It's Thursday morning. It's already hot. And they, just think, people are going out to the competition floor or outside in North Park, and they're going to be competing in all this. So yesterday we previewed the individual uh, events, and today we brought in some experts about the team events. And uh, yeah, experts it is. But Peter's the expert, I'm just still here. They can't get rid of me. They've tried, and I just keep showing up. I kind of just hang out the front, wait for them to start podcasting and jump in. Oh, no. Yeah. But before we start that, we got to pay some bills. Uh, once again, we're here at Paper Street Coffee Booth. Come on by, get some coffee. Um, a lot of great deals going on. You can purchase coffee, a uh, mug, and have free coffee or free refills throughout the whole week of the games. Uh, Box Basis is the go-to footwear and gear shop for everyday CrossFit athletes. Awesome selection. Free and fast shipping within the U.S., so sorry, guys. Um, and exceptional customer service. Try them out today at shopbasics.com. And for a limited time, get 20% off your order when you use code FRIEND at checkout. So FRIEND as in Brian FRIEND. So let's go right into it, guys. Teams. How excited are you about teams this year compared to last year? I mean, like, I would say slightly less excited because I'm not actually competing, but very excited to watch. I, <laughs> no, I'm excited. I think it's cool because it really is up in the air. The teams this year, they're very, very close. I know, Peter, you've got a lot of insight on uh, particularly European teams, but I think whilst there are a few standouts, with the, way, with the type of tests that we are seeing start to pop up, which I know we're going to talk about, and the roster of different teams out there, I really do think that this is going to be a lot closer than we've seen team competition in the past. Yeah, Peter, you have anything to say on that? Yeah, it's not, you're not going to look, there's no runaway winner. Yeah. Like, there's obviously certain events where you're like, okay, yeah, we will do really well at that, or may able to do really well, but it's going to be tight. I think I've had, like, people say about, you know, like, oh, is it going to be the same? Like, you know, Rich isn't there, blah, blah. It's like, this is probably going to be the closest most up in the air team division in like probably the history of the affiliate cup might say like it's going to be ridiculous yeah i definitely agree um i think in any format you look at there's probably like five or six maybe even eight teams that are pot uh, podium contenders you guys agree with that or do you think there's like five or less teams that are just set it's i'd, I'd even say more like yeah. and like i remember doing the preview um like the preview back, be friendly i even i did like say the other one i did in like before just yeah. quarterfinals where they were kind of releasing who was a team and who wasn't and i was like okay i'm just going to pick these teams that i think might make it to the games and like i'm not bragging but they all made it to the games but then all of those teams you're like shit they're going to be really good at this and they're going to be really good like it's not there isn't one team that's just going to dominate everything yeah. and it's yeah it's going to be off the whole betting and i think even exactly what you're saying with that like as much as i love the proven crew obviously told us my boy we were together on the team last year love those guys but there's going to be events there that I don't think they're necessarily going to be exceptional at compared to some of the other teams. So I really do think that that opens it up to a lot of different people that can come to the table. Um, I also think, yeah, like uh, we looked at the Europeans. I know that we've spoken about them a lot. There's a few really good European teams. And I know that there's a couple of events that really stick out for me that they're going to be good at. What do you think with like the particular events that have come out? Are there any teams that you've really got your eye on? Well, before we talk about the events, let's actually talk about the teams. We have one less team that, that today, don't we? Yeah, so, because if you probably don't know, CrossFit Believe had to withdraw due to an unfortunate accident. Did Peter, do you have any more information on Freak accident. So they were do they registered, yes. came in, registered, went to train and, you know, do some last-minute prep. He was doing a handstand walk. Josh Mattis. Josh, yeah, he was doing a handstand walk on an unpadded ramp. Uh, his hand slipped off, and he basically, as he put it, he, like, broke his face. And he, yeah. Essentially, his face is on the wrong side of his head when he got up. Yeah. It was, like, awful. Um, he obviously can't compete. Like he put up a picture on it. It's on like it's online. It's pretty grim. But um, it's they were told you've registered your team. You can't substitute in an alternate. You're out. Sorry, because um, he's obviously in too much pain and he has to go for plastic surgery and get reconstructive surgery. It's like it's really bad. Yeah, he, it was like a wooden ramp that he collapsed on. Yeah. Um. So like I mean, just you know, rules are rules, and it's like. These are the kind of rules I think that you almost never hear about because it never really arises in this kind of fashion. But it was literally an hour before that they registered. And I think maybe in the future they might need to put in some of these kind of clauses of like, obviously you don't want people saying, okay, workout number two is released and it's a ski. Can, you're like terrible on the ski, so we need you to pull out letter alternate in and we'll just deal with it. Like you don't want that to happen. But I think if someone's face is shattered, that's maybe good cause to say like, all right, okay, you can swap it. And I mean, an hour, you talk about it being an hour after they've registered as well. If you look at last year, for example, there, 
Yes, you're rules, rules and hard, the, hard and fast rules. Yeah, we, we were 30 minutes after what was supposedly the deadline for your team to register. We turned up 30 minutes after that because we were, had the issue with Lauren's shoulder and her lap, whether that was going to be healthy enough to compete. We had catch in there, ready to go. So we were given that leniency to come across. And, you know, like, I'll be the first. I think I said something about, you know, if you're going to have a hard and fast rule, have a hard and fast rule. But if you're going to allow a little bit of leniency, geez, if there's ever a situation to have leniency... I don't mean, it seems like one of them. A bit of compassion. I didn't realize it was that catastrophic. That is insane. So our hearts go out to CrossFit Believe, their fans, that affiliate, uh, obviously a great community. Our hearts go out to Josh as well. Get better, my friend. Get that team back here in Madison, or not Madison, wherever the games might be at next year. Yeah, just get healthy. And, uh, again, our hearts are out to you. Sorry to hear that, the whole Believe community. So let's just let's get back into, I mean, again, we want to recognize that, but let's get back into the actual events. So – we have cuts again. We have two cuts, just like the individuals. Uh, Friday and Saturday, we cut down to 30 teams and then 20 teams. Yep. Uh, we know four, four of the five events. So we have two tests tomorrow that we know of pretty much. I think it's only scheduled for two tests tomorrow and then three on three tests on Friday. So we know four of those. So let's talk about. We have two, two, two redux. It's basically uh, time in men and women pairs accumulate 175 overhead squats. Uh, con. What do you think about this test? Yeah, I mean, look, obviously, we did a version of this last year. Uh, yeah. Other than a lot of confusion around where we were running the shuttles in the <laughs> first one, I think I like the fact that they're being redoing this again, same as with the alpaca, and they've got the seated legless rope climbs in there because I think particularly with the teams in there and particularly early in the competition where you still have all of the different teams, this is going to be a massive separator. Like that seated legless, if it is the same standard as the semifinals where they have to climb up and down, at... at at the games level, like all of the individuals had to pass that test, but the teams had to do a little bit of that as well. But at the same time, like having to do that each round and each person having to do it, I think that changes the nature of this test. So it becomes less about just that crazy squat pace. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm curious to see whether it mirrors last year. I know Invictus were really good on that one last year. And obviously they've got the exact same team. Whether that rope climb fundamentally changes that for them or not, I'm not sure. But yeah, I think I think... I'm curious to see how much of a different test it is because that was just a leg burner. And shoulders, leg and shoulders. It was later on in the test, shoulders were fatigued, so it'll be good. He mentioned Invictus. Peter, is there any other team that you're looking at in terms of that event that you think might uh, might surprise us or not surprise us? I think there's obvious, like like you said, those top eight, 12 teams, yeah. like any of those could do well. I think the real thing that, you know, kind of sort of alluded to there is that you have teams that basically did this test. And they will have thought about this test. I will remember this test and remember what it felt like, what yeah. worked, what didn't work. So they're going to have a bit of an advantage over, say, teams that haven't tried it or teams that have changed their lineup a bit. So I think Invictus are like, you know, Invictus, Oslo, those kind of teams that are exactly as they were coming back. Yeah. They sound a better chance than the others, I think. I'm going to throw a team out there. You guys tell me if you think it might they might surprise someone. AB Mayhem. Yeah, I mean, they surprised everyone at semi final. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so AB Mayhem, like I said, they did really good, especially in that final test. kind of came out of nowhere. They're really good on high gymnastics. That weight is really going to be really nothing for them on the overhead squats. Yeah. I think that's some, a team to look look out for. Yeah, Torian should do well on that one as well. Yeah, they're good squatters too. Yeah. yeah, and great on the rope. Yeah, a little bias there, huh? They just need to bring uh, they need to bring an IV bag for Swanee, but oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, look, he needs it for one workout. Then he's fine. And as his workout, they have it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As his workout, he has his meltdown, and he's fine for the rest of the competition. Shout out, Brandon Swan. Love you, buddy. Yep. Dad hours. Check it out. Uh, our, and then the final test we have is a ride relay. Yep. This is something you're pretty excited about. You did something similar last year. Yeah, I mean, we had the ride component. There was a lot of other stuff mixed in there. I love the idea of them just riding a bike for an hour in those pairs. Do we know if it's male, male, female, female? Wow. Well, if it's... We don't know yet. We don't know. I asked the uh, Invictus squad and a couple other teams. They said they, it was unknown right now. Right. Okay. So, I mean, that's going to make it. A, there's a massive, massive change if it's male, female, or if you can go two males going at the same time and then females. Love to. I'm, I'm excited to see what CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue does on yeah. this. Really excited so to see what they do on this. One of the variation of this last year. Did yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. And they won by a pretty good margin. So, it's like, they're, they're stupid fit. Yeah. They are stupid fit. Yeah. yeah they are. Uh, is there anyone else you think? I like honestly just cannot look past Oslo for that. I just think <laughs> there's going to be a big gap between yeah, right. first and second. That really. Well, I would also say may, any of the uh, maybe the other Oslo teams might else whether it be whether it be Blackout, yeah, or the Trondheim. Could you get a one a one to four of Oslo? Yeah. Could, I mean, they're just like those Norwegians and like the Scandinavians, the Europeans in general, particularly. 
such good engines. You always see it in the open as well, where you look at the leaderboard after the massive endurance tests, particularly when that used to be event number one in the open, you would see that the top of the leaderboard would just be stacked with Scandinavians, Norwegians, Swedish athletes, that kind of stuff. So I think both the ride, and I suppose we'll get to the 5K, but I really think that you're going to see those those Norwegian teams, the Scandinavian teams doing well. It would be interesting to see as well the course, how the course works, because obviously you're all grass, gravel, you know, like the, the individuals are up first on that. So they have like, could be slick grass, whatever. Yeah. So if you're watching that and you're coming off grass where you have to pedal a little bit harder, you're coming onto gravel on a turn, yeah. like that could be something to watch out for as well of what team's going to get a bit too giddy coming into turns and stuff, or if it's a bit crowded, yep. you could have a bit of a problem. Kind of have a question regarding the transition. Obviously, it's just not a straight bike ride. Yep. There are obviously a component where you're running with the bike. Yep. How, what's that do with, the, with your heart rate? Uh, when, I mean, I haven't seen what the transition looks like this year, so I can only go on what we did last year. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it kind of just felt a little bit like it was just about, hey, you're gonna, you want to rush it. You don't want to go too crazy. But I found that the transition itself, your heart rate actually came down a little bit. I felt like I was working and then it was kind of just coasting. It was all downhill and into the arena and stuff like that. And I found that that part was like less stressful than the actual bike ride itself in terms of that. I mean, if you push the transitions, I don't know if they're going to have to change every certain amount of laps or whatever it is, whether the transition is going to add more time, that's going to be something interesting. So if you've got the course, right? and you stay on the course for multiple laps, do you then avoid having to come back and transition? Because then there's a whole conversation around picking how many laps is it beneficial to do that for, where you don't lose time on that transition. Yeah. If you've got a couple of like unreal bikers on your team, do they go a couple of extra laps to the other guys to minimize those transitions? And these are all things that are gonna be, obviously when we get the full briefing, that's gonna be a massive conversation for the teams to talk about how they're gonna split this up and what the transition is going to look like yeah well, i agree um that's day one just two events but they're they're pretty good events i think uh we move on to friday this is cut day for at least seven so do we know if there's any more coming on day one no. or if that's what we've got released based on the schedule we only have two okay cool. based on the schedule but um then we go on to friday which is cut day we have seven teams that won't be moving on unfortunately or six teams so the six teams because believes out uh we saw with the cross country 5k we do know that one um it looks like it's Four time run a 5K as a team. So, pretty simple. You're only as fast as your slowest runner, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't like. Yeah. I don't like that you have to hold. Is that because you're just the slowest runner or you're the best? Wow. Runner in your group. I know that is. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I just think that as a. I just would have liked to see like someone, like look at Joshua on Walleye. Just let him go yeah. and you'll see something spectacular. Like he could set a record on it. He's crazy yeah. fast. Yeah. But then he was a guy who won the 2019 yeah. Ruck Run. Higher up race, yeah. like he's crazy fit. Yeah. But like he's done Ironman and everything. But if you have, you know, I'm not saying that the, they're a particularly slow team, but like the girls on that team want to bit themselves are stronger than they are like fast. Yeah. So if you have them holding the rope, he obviously has to slow down a bit and then it's going to have an effect on the team. So I think in like kind of a, um, you know, like uh, sending a tribute forward way, I would have liked to see them just put the bracelet on one, their best athlete, let them go and the others yeah. have to do it. Yeah. You know, and there may be a cutoff time if you have to be in by this time, but I just think for a bit of a spectacle, maybe just let them run. I think a cumulative total of all four runners would be the best way to do it. I think that I understand the necessity to run as a team and to show teamwork, but exactly like you're saying, having been on the team before in that running situation, it genuinely becomes like, particularly if you are the better runner on that, on your team, like you are the best runner on that team. It almost with training, it becomes challenging if all the running that you do is that because you are, you're never running at your actual capacity. So I think, yeah, I understand that like working as a team, I understand that running with the rope is a skill in of itself. You can get things like pushing people and all that kind of stuff. But I think that five, four people, cumulative total of all four of them running across the field or an average even, and then the yeah. fast guy can send us. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. like last has to try and keep up as much as they can to keep the average. Up. Yeah, with the cumulative total as well. Yeah, I, like all the average, something along those lines, let them, yeah, let them flex their cardio. Yeah. You never get to flex cardio on a team if oh, you're the fifth. Like the speaking of you doing it last year, I'm also actually excited to see Tola do that as well because oh, like oh, watching yeah. him run is just like beautiful. Oh yeah. yeah, he's such a good runner. He's really created, reinvented himself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we don't know what the, middle event is that's unscheduled but we do know that the teams are going to end in the coliseum under the lights with an olympic total speaking of tola yeah <laughs> but the thing is this is weird it, uh, this is something i suggested that i wanted to see and I, i'm going to take a little credit for this because i wanted to see this i wanted to see the olympic uh the team lifting event as a final event because typically we end fridays or saturdays with the individuals doing the lifts yeah. but 
I maybe CrossFit looked at the teams and said, "Whoa, we have some heavy hitters here. Let's put them under the spotlight." So oh, they're actually going last. They're going last this year. Yeah. So we were going to see maybe Tola and some of these other like Andrea Nissers, uh, Chris yeah. Middle, Christine Middleton from uh, the Rhinos, put up some huge numbers. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, I, I think it's good, and I think as well like I, there was a uh, potential for this at semifinals that was stemmed a bit because people kind of didn't need to do, but like if you're in. The arena under the lights you're not going to give a sh crap if you need to do it or not you're going to do it yeah. and i think if you, like you know i'll throw in like mia heskett into that list and yeah, as well like there's very underrated yeah it's going to be a crazy she's an unbelievable lift yeah. she's that's going to be good honestly like the it's only two it's two attempts correct and we don't know that's how it is for individuals all we know it's four load one rep, one rep max snatch and one rep max clean dress. Still up in the air, buzz, day. Let Tola just give him five minutes. Let him have as many lifts just as he wants. Do what the age groups did. They had, what was it, a three minute window yeah, to do their snatch? Yeah, yeah. Three minute, do as many as he wants. I yeah. think that was good. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, obviously, you, the favorite here has to be East Nashville Proven. You know, they, there's no other stronger girls. But, uh, <laughs> I but I. Think there's no other, like, is there anyone as. I mean, Paulson's a great lifter as well. Tola's obviously going to do something stupid because God love him. That's what he does. I think there's, I think there's, there's no shortcut. There's plenty of teams like Andre Hude is yes. beautiful lifter. Really? There's plenty of teams that have like one, maybe two people yeah. that are going to put on a show. Yeah. But I think Proven just have it with the lock. Yeah, the four. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's some other interesting. We talked about no shortcuts. We talked about Proven. I think the Mayhem Independence might be sneaky. They have Kyra Milligan yeah. and Ange Angelo De Chico and Sam Demeester. I think those are very underrated lifters. Uh, is there any other teams that are, especially from Europe? I think, like, no shortcuts uh, will be. Yeah, no shortcuts. Two guys in no shortcuts are yeah. ridiculously strong. Yeah. And then Mia and Wawai as well. She, yeah. she, like, she'd be right up there with the girls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Mia could get the best lift. Uh, she snatches particularly. She got the best snatch of everyone. Yeah. And she snatched like 245, 111 before. Yeah. I think so. In competition, too, which is why is no good. But yeah, I got yeah, the second yeah, number. <laughs> yeah. Invictus might be if, if we have a healthy uh, Jorge, you know, and. Yeah, you have a healthy Jorge. You have Joshua Chama, who obviously we know that guy can lift. Yeah. And then Devin is no slouch, slouch herself. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, again, if it's only two, two, uh, two attempts, and let's say someone from another team they they miss their attempts and they go at the lowest total, that might open the window for someone. So it may, it might not be a slammed up. We don't know. And you're probably also going to see again. It's a bit unfortunate that there's only two attempts because if you give a team three minutes and they're on the cut line. They could go like oh. crazy and try and go yeah. for something. Whereas when you got two attempts, like you say, if you miss a lift, you're screwed. Yeah, yeah, so you have to be somewhat careful. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's my biggest gripe with that event for the individuals as well, is that we are going to see safe lifts because you have to with two attempts. And that's cool, but like, ah oh man, we'll let them roll the dice. Give us a show. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think Tolo opens up with? <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I'm not going to say it because okay. oh. I give my boys details away. I could, you, I could probably guess, and I could yeah. probably guess, but I'm not going to. Yeah, it's going to be fun regardless. It's going to be great to finally see that the teams kind of get the spotlight, yeah. and um, you know, and it's going to be huge because again, then we're going to cut down again down to 20 teams after that event. So we don't know what the next event is. We know there's three on. Well, right now, according to the schedule, there's three events. Yeah, so I think there's some of the sandwich with him. But you know what we haven't seen yet is a worm. So do you think a worm might be in that second event? Or will they wait for the final 20 maybe? I, ho I hope so because last year they only had the worm in the final event. We had So we had to hold the worm and burfy over it. But the worm was only showed up in the final event and they just basically jammed every movement possible into that. I liked that idea, but it is the worm is such a beautiful piece of equipment. The it is best test for teamwork. It is my favorite, favorite, favorite piece of equipment for a team because there is no better test of teamwork than the worm. Yeah. The slightest deviation in your pulling speed from the floor, the way that you lift it, the speed over, like that little bit of like a little bit of disharmony can cause so much chaos on that piece of equipment. Let the teams test it. Let all of the teams test it. Because you might find that some of these teams that do excel at the workouts mm -hmm. there because there is those different individual components, they do struggle a little bit on that worm. They shouldn't. The top ones obviously aren't going to. Yeah. But I think that it is such a, with that many cuts, I think it's such a game-changing piece of equipment yeah. that I think it's important to have it show up earlier. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, you agree with that? If even not a worm, some type of team element, whether it be the bob or something like that, I think you have to have some type of team I think bef before, before you have cuts, you need to test everything. And I think yeah. one of the things you need to test is those components we're talking about where everybody's working together at once, and then maybe like a waterfall style, and then maybe two and two, and then everyone holding the rope. Like you want to test 
not just like the different tests of fitness, but you want to test the different dynamics of how a team operates. Because yeah. you can have some team that's from an affiliate, like maybe one of the Oslo teams who train all the time together, who just have better communication and a better understanding of each other on a, on a piece of equipment like the Worm, compared to a team who maybe comes together, goes apart. Yeah. And I think it might be special to see something like that. Yeah, I think this, I think we talk about modality, especially for the individual. I think the team, there, that's a new modality, is teamwork. We're not talked about, so that's what you hear, teamwork, right? And I think it's a, yeah, I think if we don't have that in there, I don't know. It's kind of an incomplete type of thing. You don't want to give people something to talk about after the fact. Sure. And if you don't put it in, people will talk about the fact that it wasn't tested. So overall, knowing what we see, what do you think in terms of those first four tests going into their first cuss? Are you happy with it? Or do you think these tests are will get the top 30 and eventually top 20 teams into the final? I think, yeah, I think we just covered what we need to say in the middle there. Like, we, I think we have to say something that works for teamwork. We've got a lot of strategy. Strategy goes into that, particularly depending on what that ride relay does. Like, there is a lot of strategy that goes into it. But there isn't anything that I believe necessarily tests teamwork to uh, uh, all four people. So if, they, if that needs to come in, then I think it's a fine test to whittle down to six teams. Yeah. Peter, you, do you think I added that? Yeah, I agree. I think it, 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 a lot of it hinges on what that middle test is. And I think, like... Hopefully, from that middle test that ends, we all breathe a sigh of relief and say, oh yeah, okay, perfect. And there's no frustration or we don't feel like there's something left out. Yep. Because even taking about it for the teams, you'd like the teams to walk away, anyone that's cut, to walk away and say, look, you know, we weren't good enough. We didn't do this, we didn't do that. You don't want someone walking away with a be in their bonnet about what the programming was or what was left out. Yeah. Especially if they're just above the cut line and then it does come up with the worm and then the other team just below the cut line potentially does terribly with it and that team's unbelievable with the worm. Yeah, it's going to make it. Yeah, frustrating for them. Wow. Well, I think either way, it's going to be entertaining. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I know you guys are going to be on the ground. You have a, obviously a vested interest. That Peter is, pro is the foremost team expert this year. You've been crushing it. That's, cause no, that's just because nobody else gives a shit about teams. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Well, obviously we care. That's why we're shooting this show. Peter, what do you what do you got? You are probably the busiest, one of the busiest man, men in Madison this weekend. Where, where are we going to find it? Yeah, I know. Yeah. What do you got going on this week? Where are we going to find Peter at? Besides covering, doing some cover, team coverage for us. No, uh, 5150 social media. Yep. Um, so that's on my page and their page. And it's covering the Irish athletes. So Lucy McGallagher, she's, she's wrapping up tomorrow. Sam Stewart's with Walleye. Um, so he'll be watching me lift something ridiculous and hopefully lifting something ridiculous himself. And then we've got Emma Quaid. Um, she's obviously our, you know, our great big hope in the individual side. Yeah. Um, so covering them for them, uh, writing some captions and stuff. Then I'm interviewing apparently Sarah Sigmund's daughter at the Toll Spacer get together on Friday. Um, and then just vlogging and trying to cover as much as I can. Like, I'm sure you understand when you do a podcast and you bring it on the road, it turns out to be a bit shit because you're asking people to meet you somewhere specifically quiet for an hour, which is hard. Or a tattoo studio. Yep. Um, <laughs> so I thought vlogging was maybe a good way to get people a quick, short, little five minute uh, excerpts and stuff. So. It's on YouTube, go and watch it. And if you think it's great, tell everyone. If you don't think it's great, just keep your mouth shut. That seems fair. <laughs> and Con, where are we going to find you on Thursday? Uh, floating around, as per usual. I'm actually, I'm really excited for tomorrow. So actually, tomorrow uh, tomorrow morning, I'm doing a fun thing that I'm not allowed to say today. <laughs> oh, uh, so basically. Anywho, <laughs> uh, but otherwise, I'll be, uh, I'll be around. So obviously, with the individuals kicking off, I'm going to watch them and the teams as well. I think tomorrow will just be a big watching day for me. I'm super excited for... You know, really leaning. Yeah. Today Sorry, today watch. will be a very good, exciting Thursday day. Today, it, it is a good yeah. day. There is it. Cheers for all the talk about days. We've talked yeah. about days a lot. Yeah. These are long days. <laughs> yeah, long days. You're used to meet on Friday. Right? I do tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Is it? He's like keeping your schedule. Yeah. Or it's really creepy how he knows all this. <laughs> exactly. And then yeah. So tomorrow we'll just be hanging around, checking out, uh, watching all the events, and trying not to get too sunburnt. Yeah. Or pissed. Well, again, Peter's. Thanks for joining us. Obviously, if you're not following Peter on Coffee Pods and Wads, give him a follow. He's he's going to be doing our uh, event recap for the team division. Con, you're pretty much you're pretty much you're pretty much like a part of the show now. So you know, we want to thank Peter and Con as usual showing up. Uh, we want to thank our, our our beautiful host, Paper Street Coffee. Again, swing on by. Who knows? You don't know who you're going to see here. I've seen Seb on here. I've seen uh, just just different athletes coming through here um i've just seen brian peter and patrick really yeah exactly <laughs> uh brian uh, is gonna be around if you see brian catch a selfie with them um also 
can't say uh, enough about Box Spaces. Thanks for making this happen. And until tomorrow morning, be friendly, our friends. Stay classy, Madison, Wisconsin.